Ethiopia and visual politic go way back. It's a country of miracles. Since 2018, we've been telling you how its new president, Abiy Ahmed, is turning the country into a fully-fledged democracy with a growing economy. He already has a Nobel Peace Prize under his belt. And here on Visual Politic, we have named him Politician of the Year twice. Hey, get over it, Joe Biden. However, all this enthusiasm for Abiy Ahmed evaporates when we come across news headlines like this. Ethiopia's Prime Minister trades his Nobel Peace Prize for civil war. Bloomberg. Boom. That's some blow, right? But friends, wait a minute. And haters, take a second before heading to the comments, because I owe you an explanation, and I always pay back my debts. You will soon see that things are much more complicated than they seem. Why? Why has this Ethiopian miracle ended up in armed conflict? Has Abiy Ahmed fooled everyone and become the new warlord of Africa? Today, we are going to answer these questions, but first, let's take a little look back at some history. One country, 80 ethnicities. Ethiopia and Liberia are the only African countries that have never been colonized. Although it is true that, for a while, Ethiopia was occupied by Mussolini's Italy. But believe me, in Ethiopia, they haven't needed the wicked European imperialists to create problems. Among its more than 100 million inhabitants, up to 80 different ethnic groups can be distinguished. And these ethnic groups get along with each other because, how can I say it? Let's say that no one has celebrated social distancing measures imposed by COVID more than Ethiopia. For decades, the only thing that has held Ethiopians together is the strength of the power they were subjected to. Our history begins in 1991. At that time, Ethiopia went from being a communist dictatorship to becoming another communist dictatorship. And you will say, what a change! Well, the truth is that actually, yes, it was a radical change. From 1974 to 1991, Ethiopia was dominated by the Dirge, a savage military junta. The Dirge were responsible for the famous famines in Ethiopia in the 1980s. Do you remember Michael Jackson's We Are The World? Well, that song was composed to raise funds to help this country. In those years, more than one million Ethiopians died of hunger because of the collectivization of land imposed by the Dirge. In 1991, after a long and bloody war, the Dirge were driven from power. And so a new Ethiopia was born. An Ethiopia that would follow a model similar to that of Chinese communism. In fact, relations between China and Ethiopia have always been very good. But that's another story for another video. The truth is that among all those guerrilla groups, two stood out. On the one hand, there was the Eritrean guerrilla group, which had achieved independence for its own country. On the other hand, there was the TPLF, the Tigray People's Liberation Front. The Tigray are one of Ethiopia's 80 ethnic groups. They are in the north of the country, very close to Eritrea, and represent 6% of the entire population. However, as they were the ones who defeated the Dirge, they became the masters of the new Ethiopia. In fact, their leader, Melez Zenawi, ruled the entire country for 17 years. And you're probably thinking, but what difference does it make which ethnic group this man belongs to? It does matter. It matters a lot. In Ethiopia, ethnicity means everything. In fact, the Ethiopian parliament is not divided into parties, but into ethnicities. What's more, the whole country is divided into nine regions. These regions are called Kililok in the plural, or Kilil in the singular. Well, the borders of these Kililok are drawn on the basis of ethnic criteria. For example, Tigray is one of these Kililok, one of these regions where 96% of the population belongs to the Tigray ethnic group. For years, all the power in Ethiopia has been shared between the Tigray, who didn't come out of the war empty-handed, the Oromos, and the Amharis, which are the majority ethnic groups. And here is where the problem comes, because the current Ethiopian prime minister belongs to the Oromo ethnic group. In fact, he became prime minister because of the Amhara gave him the their support. And that means that the Tigray lost all their influence in the rest of the country. So what happened next? Well, let's take a look at that right now. The last roar of the Tigray. Abiy Ahmed came to power in April 2018. He had two years before the next federal elections, which were to be held in mid-2020. But two years were enough to turn the country around. From the outset, he signed a peace treatment with Eritrea, with whom Ethiopia had been at war for almost 30 years. But the most important thing is that he removed all the laws that censored the media and announced free elections. <laughs> In other words, unlike the previous elections, these were not going to be a mere formality that ended up with the tribal leaders choosing the prime minister. However, democratizing a country like Ethiopia is no bed of roses. In other visual politic videos, we have already told you about the problems it has had with various other ethnic groups. But now, the problem comes down to this. 
Ethiopia. Prime Minister Abiy Ahmed dismisses Army Chief of Staff and Intelligence Director in a major military shakeup. Protests in Tigray. Oh, pride. Ethiopia arrests government officials over corruption. The Africa Report. Former Ethiopian minister jailed for corruption, AA. As you can see, Abiy Ahmed's strategy is to eliminate the power quota that the Tigrays have had since the 1990s. And as you can imagine, this news didn't sit well in the Tigray region. After 30 years of dominating Ethiopia, it is not easy to accept that you have lost power. But the last draw came at the end of 2020. The current leader of the Tigray region, Debrezion Gebremichael, is someone who has challenged Abiy Ahmed to become the prime minister of Ethiopia. In 2020, he was planning to run again in the elections. The idea was that these elections would not be a mere formality. They had to be free. In a country like Ethiopia, that means having a census. And taking a census in a poor country of 100 million people is not exactly easy. As if all this weren't enough, the coronavirus pandemic has only complicated matters further. Conclusion. Abiy Ahmed proposed delaying the elections until 2021. And then this happened. <laughs> Ethiopian Prime Minister's term extended as election delayed for virus. AP News. The Tigrays insisted that Abiy Ahmed's legitimacy ended in 2020. So they challenged the federal power in Addis Ababa and announced that they would hold their own elections in Tigray Kilil in September. And I say elections because Debrezian Gebremichael got 98.2% of the votes. Abiy Ahmed did not stand still either because he decided to reduce the federal funds dedicated to the Tigray region as a means of pressure against the TPLF. But the real challenge came in October. News. Tigray region says it will defy federal laws enacted as of October 5th at its standard. Keep in mind that the Tigray region is one with the most prepared army. In fact, the northern command of the Ethiopian army is based there, and many have speculated that these soldiers might change sides in the event of a war against the federal government. But the point of no return took place on the 4th of November, when TPLF forces attacked the bases of the Federal Army's Northern Command. The TPLF assures that this attack never took place, and that it was just an excuse used by Abiy Ahmed to invade Tigray. So, who is in the right? Well, what can I say? Apart from who fired the first shot, there are two things that leave the TPLF looking very bad. The first is that the Tigrays have bombed Eritrea with the aim of internationalizing the conflict and provoking other actors, such as the African Union, to intervene. After three decades representing Ethiopia abroad, the Tigrays still have friends on the international stage. Do you want an example? Have you heard of a certain Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus? That's right, he's none other than the current director of the World Health Organization and is a member of the TPLF. But there is a second reason to condemn what the Tigrays have done, and that is ethnic cleansing. Tigrayan youth group accused of massacre in Ethiopia, BBC. More than 600 civilians, mostly Amhara, were found dead in Mai Kendra when federal troops entered this small town. We are talking about an area in the Kilil of Tigray that the Amhara claim as their own. It was Amnesty International who indicated the perpetrators were a group of young Tigray people. On 28th of November, Abiy Ahmed proclaimed victory in the war against the TPLF after the seizure of the capital of Tigray rebel forces have taken refuge in the mountains and assure that they will continue to confront Abiy Ahmed. However, it seems more like bravado on the part of the Tigray because they are no longer those young people who overthrew the dirge, but a group of sexagenarians who refuse to recognize that they lost power long ago. Even so, Abiy Ahmed has important challenges ahead of him. The moment of truth. It is true, Ethiopia's internal crisis has brought out its ruler's worst side. Internet and telephone lines have been cut off again in the Oromia and Tigray areas, so that it is not known for sure what is going on there. In addition, there are testimonies that claim that the government forces have surpassed themselves in the use of force. The human rights violations are terrible, but at least for the first time, an Ethiopian ruler has been capable of self-criticism. Look at the explanation he gave in a letter to The Economist. Given the institutions we have inherited, we realize that law enforcement activities entail a risk of human rights violations and abuse. The mindset and tactics of the past are not so easy to unlearn. Security and judicial reforms take time. Abi Ahmed, Prime Minister of Ethiopia. It is true that political transitions are complicated and require time, but we must be clear, Abi Ahmed's moment of truth has come. It is time for him to show that his promises were sincere, because so far he has shown his most authoritarian side. He has barely even tried to negotiate with the opposition. 
For three weeks, the TPLF forces have held out against the advance of the Federal Army. So now this threat has been neutralized, Abiy Ahmed must return to his initial roadmap. And that means returning to Tigray as normal. Something that does not seem to be happening at the moment, since the Galila of Tigray has been excluded from participating in the next elections. The National Election Board has claimed that there is now an interim government there, and that it has quite a bit of work ahead of it before elections can be held. However, this is not the worst problem it has to deal with. Ethnic profiling of Tigrayans heightens tensions in Ethiopia, the new humanitarian. Since the crisis broke out, there have been multiple reports of ethnic discrimination against the Tigrays throughout the rest of the country. It is claimed that Tigray officials have been ordered not to go to work, and members of the Ethiopian security forces belonging to this ethnic group have been disarmed. Nothing justifies this revanchism or the ethnic purging against these citizens. With the defeat of the TPLF, Abiy Ahmed has to keep his promises. And I'm sure there's more than one person thinking, in the end, this Abiy Ahmed doesn't seem much better than the Tigray, but we must remember that the Tigray have enjoyed enormous levels of power for decades, and they are not making things easy for the current president. In fact, in regards to the other ethnic groups, Abiy Ahmed is fulfilling his promises. For example, do you remember what I told you about the right to self-determination of peoples being a dead letter? Well, yes, it was for decades, but the government of Abiy Ahmed has already allowed this right to self-determination to be successfully practiced. Sidama referendum. Over 98% vote yes for Ethiopia's 10th regional state. Africa News. Seven months after the referendum, it was already a reality. Ethiopia became 10 Kililok when the Sidama people constituted their own Kilil and declared their autonomy. And take note, because this may not be the last referendum, there are already 10 ethnic groups that have asked for their own autonomy referendums. And I know what many of you will be thinking, since when is it good news for a country to be divided along racial lines? Well, the truth is that democratizing a country like Ethiopia is not easy, and for the moment, this seems to be the most realistic solution. But the question is now over to you. Do you think that these referendums are a good solution to alleviate ethnic tensions? Do you think that Abiy Ahmed is right with this hardline approach against the Tigrays? Or do you think that he will show up later in the year on visual politic as one of the politicians who disappointed us the most in 2021? Leave your answers down in the comments below. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos. And as always, I'll see you next time. And if you want to learn more about politics and hear even more of my lovely voice, you can join us at Reconsider Media. We have a podcast at reconsidermedia.com slash podcast. See you there.